announcements real quick. We're going to give a little, Bri, you ready with Mikey? Hey, you set free. What's happening? Just sitting down here at the church, getting some stuff uh, dialed in for church tonight. Just having a having a good time, me and Jesus right now. So uh, we got a few days, what, 12 days, I think it is, until Thanksgiving. And uh, so I just want to share with you what I'm going to sh uh, challenge my people tonight. And maybe we'll just put the challenge out to you as well. So for the next several days... This is what I'm going to ask my people to do. I'm going to challenge them to sit down, have some quiet time, maybe a little praise and worship music in the back, uh, however, however you want to do your quiet time, and get a pad of, a pad of paper and a pencil or a pen, and uh, just start writing down and pray about it. Right? Start writing down all the things that you're thankful for. And um, when you get done with your list, after the, like I say, for the next several days, when you get done with your list, Start thanking God, you know, be continuous in the, in, in, in thanking him for everything that you're thankful for. When you do that, you're going to start to develop an attitude of gratitude and you'll be amazed at the things that happen. Hey man, we're just excited about all the things that are taking place up here in Sturgis. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you again for all your prayers and support and uh, be blessed. Stay fired up for Jesus. We'll talk to you soon. He is doing so well down there. It's just amazing. So shoe boxes. Who has a shoe box out? Okay, so you're supposed to bring them back tonight, but we're going to give you a break till next week. Okay, so yeah, last, next Saturday is the end of the shoe boxes. Okay, come on, Miss Gina. Jeez. Hello, everyone. Okay, so Set Free Kids, you know, we are going to Colorado in March for, yay, yes, we're excited, for a puppet competition and a chance for them to learn more about outreaches and all different kinds of stuff. And so we are continuing in fundraising. So for the month of December, we're going to have a Christmas with the Set Free Kids performance and spaghetti dinner night. So mark your calendar. It is December 8th here at the church at 5 p.m. We're going to have a spaghetti dinner. It'll all be donation, just donation only, whatever you can give. Um, for you, your family, friends, bring everybody. We're going to have a spaghetti dinner. The kids are going to do performances throughout the evening. Then we'll have dessert and we're going to have a silent auction. So we're super excited. So what we need are some people to help us and donate baskets. Now what we're, we're doing is the different things that will be up for the silent auction will be baskets. An example someone gave us was a coffee basket with some packages of coffee and a couple coffee mugs and a cute little basket all decorated nice. And if there's anybody, there's many, if you need ideas, you can look on Pinterest or you can ask me, I can give you ideas. If you want to make a basket, but maybe you're not creative and you don't really know what to do and you want to just throw me some money and I make a basket for you, I can do that too. I don't really care how it happens as long as we get some baskets. So, and the kids on Wednesday night, I was so proud of them. They sat and planned the entire thing. They came up with about 20 different ideas of different baskets that can be bought for literally $10 or less. So it's not something that has to be intimidating or expensive. So if anyone wants to donate a basket, we will need them by the 7th, which is the night before the party. And if you will just come back to the checkout spot, um, back by the Pastor JT's office, and just sign up that you're going to do a basket, I would greatly appreciate it so we know how many we have. So mark your calendars, invite everybody you know, because the spaghetti is going to be awesome. And the kids will be doing some new performances. So you're going to see stuff you've never seen before from them so oh I almost forgot so that's what when is that oh wait I have mine right here so then on December the next Sunday I believe it is December what 15th so December 15th will be our annual Christmas skating party at Wheels of Thunder. I will have the time for you next week, but we're hoping five to seven. And that is free of charge for anybody that goes to set free to come with your family and just celebrate Christ's birth with us skating. So. I know. 
right on. Good deal. We still got the unoffendable books for 12 bucks. Anybody offended in here today? Okay, well, that's all right. We'll work on that before the night's over. We'll get you all offended. <clears throat> Angel Tree Handout is going to be on the 30th. We have 30 kids, so get ready for that when we get ready to rock and roll with that. And then the last thing I got tonight is the Grandma Church is here. Come on, ladies. Come on. And they got something they want to share tonight. I think, Sandy, are you going to be the talking? Sure, okay. First. All right. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, for your good, thank you for your good welcome. I think you can hear me. I don't know if it's on or not. Hello? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I held one of these. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you for your wonderful welcome. You are from the Nazarene Church, not necessarily the old folks' home <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, we have a special thing. We've come to thank the guys who drive the van every Monday without fail. We just love them. Would love to name them individually. <laughs> But I think Diane can. <laughs> She'd been with the Nazarene Church for, well, I think she was the one that started the first brick. <laughs> anyway, just love you guys, Polly. <laughs> and I know we had Tommy for quite a while. Tom, Tommy. There you are. David, Billy, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you so much. It's such a dedicated group, and um, we're just so blessed that you guys come and you bring the food. And uh, a lot of times I tend to, well, not a lot of times, but sometimes I tend to kind of space out when the food bank is shut down. And the guys actually load up and bring whatever they can over. And, um, yeah, it's been, the food bank's been running how many years? About? Oh, I was going to say, it's Diane's turn. <laughs> this is Diane, Marquita, and Rako. There's uh, three more that uh, are on our team anyway, what I call our team that aren't here tonight. But, uh, okay, thank you, my dear. But, you know, I just want to say the first time when I was at the Nazarene Church that the food ministry started, and I apologize, but there was Pastor JT and there was Kay Broderick. Okay, that's been a lot of years, years, years. And I've seen a lot of people, a lot of you guys. Oh, my gracious sakes. It's been wonderful. You guys, we can kid and joke. And there's hugs and there's prayer. And... To each and every one of you, I know that there are some times that the driver, the regular drivers, are not able to do it. So there are other volunteers also, just as there is in, in the Church of the Nazarene. So God bless you all, and I'm going to present something to you. And uh, it's to, in appreciation... It's in appreciation for all, all of those drivers. And it's a certificate of appreciation. And it has on here this hand. You know, praise the Lord. <laughs> to each and every one that your name is inscribed on the palm of his hand, which is Isaiah 49, 16. So to each and every one of you of Set Free Ministries, God bless you and thank you. Thank you. 
I'm going to hold on to this so I don't drop it. I get one. So you get one too. That all. We call them the Grandma Church for one for one reason. You do not escape that place without a hug. Guaranteed, you're going to get hugged when you get there. So we appreciate all the work that they do over there, and uh, yeah, it's just a working hand in hand with each other, and it's all good. So, amen. Cowboy, you're on, buddy. All right. Please join me in our set free pledge. You ready? All right. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up, till I stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. <clears throat> Every time I get to that... Um my companions are few. I think about all you guys. My head runs back to my past. I can think and I can count on one hand. <clears throat> Since I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, how many of my old friends are hanging with me? <clears throat> but how many of the new friends I truly have now? Amen? This is truly a family. So, but the other side of that too is the reconciling power of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we can accept him, obey him, and move forward, the things that happen. So like I said, out of that few that have stayed with me, hung with me, as I've started chasing after Jesus, how many now are starting to talk to me again. And I get to share Jesus. Amen? So, that's the power of our Lord. Amen? If you bow your heads with me, we're going to bring in tonight's offering and praise. Father God, Lord, we truly thank you for what you have done in our lives, Lord. Father God, you are the giver. You are the provider of all. Father God, we give you that praise, honor, and glory in all we do. This evening, as we, as we give this evening, Lord, may our focus be on your love. This tremendous love that has been poured out in the life of Jesus Christ. You've given us life in Jesus Christ. What an amazing thing, Lord, if we can just grab hold, hold tight, and know and understand the power we have in that. But Father God, we give tonight of that joy, because of that joy, because of that love, and because of what you've done for us. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. Everybody want to stand? I just want to say thank you to all those who have um, poured out their love and prayers and cards uh, for my mother. Um, Fortunate thing, I know where she's at. She's in heaven. Pastor asked me, where's mama at? And I said, in heaven. 
but she's actually referring to Tanya, but she's not there yet, but we're on the way, amen? Christ in the family of God. Amen? I love that. Amen. And as we sing this next one, sometimes we'll do hymns. Sometimes you never know what we're going to do up here, right? <laughs> now, we don't either. <laughs> no. <laughs> but at the same time, sometimes songs are needed. And you know the one that you needed, right? So tonight, if you've been through an abusive situation, any kind of trafficking, I know this song was wrote, written for that healing that you need to bring to God's attention, that he wants to heal any hurt, any hurt, that you know God's love is great, greater than your past, greater than your pain. Let him be that God tonight. As you follow him, you learn more. Amen? Amen. 
of his great faithful love. All right? So that's what he's all about. Amen.
good father lord that you are so gracious lord that in our weakness and in our strength father god you are glorified lord i thank you that you are an awesome god that you know us from the inside out father god that you created us from the dust of the earth father god lord that you breathed life into us you gave us a soul from foundations of earth before the world was created, you called us and made us and called us by name, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are so gracious, Lord, that you are forgiving, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the life that you give us. I thank you, Lord, even as just buried my mother and even with my brother. Lord, from the ashes we were created and the ashes we returned. But Lord, our soul is with you in eternity. Father, we look forward to the day when we can see you face to face. And Lord, all the questions that we have, Lord, will be answered. Though we don't understand right now, Lord, your plan is perfect. And your ways are beyond our comprehension. But Lord, still you loved us when we run from you. And Lord, you're there with open arms to receive us. In those days, Father, I thank you, Lord, that we have something to look for, that you give us a hope and a future, that your plans are for us and not against us. And Lord, you have prepared a place for us. And Lord, I thank you for that day when I will see you face to face. Lord, tonight we ask you, Lord, have your way in our hearts. Change our hearts. Make us more like you. Lord, take our hearts, mold us, and make us to the men and women of God you've called us. Lord, take our hurts, our faults, our failures. Lord, and we just lay them at your feet. Lord, be glorified in this place. Lord, as your word is declared, Lord, your words are life. Lord, let us come to the table of mercy, to your banqueting table that you've prepared for us, Father God. Lord, let us eat of your word. Let us receive your word with thankfulness in our hearts and joy in our spirits, Lord, that our lives are in your hands. And we thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we've been talking about this unoffendable stuff. So, Brian, would you bring that three-year-old up on the video here? I want to show you how a three-year-old is not offended. So, you know how I put you to bed last night? Uh-huh. Well, I got really hungry, and I ate all of your candy. Mm. 
sorry. You're just joking. You didn't eat them, huh, Katie? I did. I was really hungry. Well, I know, so long. I know, but I was really hungry and I didn't have any other food. I'm really sorry. Well, you should eat something from, from in here. Oh, I'm really sorry. You eat it. No. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. It's okay. It's okay. Now. How many of you have had something taken from you or somebody's ticked you off or somebody's offended you or somebody's angered you or all, and you said, It's all right, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if you could be like that little dude? You know, the first part of it, when she says, I ate all your candy, and he went. <laughs> That's kind of our reaction when somebody ticks us off. You know what I mean? And our first response is, oh, no, you wouldn't. You're just joking me, right? <laughs> this love thing is kind of, it's tough, isn't it? To love everybody all the time, no matter what happens. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's different types of love. There's they call it storage love, eros love, phileo love, agape love. And in the Bible, there's, there's two of them, but I want to read a couple of these things to you. The storage love is it's an affectionate love. This love exists naturally between family members and friends, such as the warm, unforced love shown between spouses or between a parent and a child. Storage love is displayed in many stories in the Bible, such as the stories of Noah, Jacob, and Mary, and Martha, and Lazarus. And then there's Eros, and it's a sexual or a passionate love. Song of Solomon paints the best example of this love. God created this love just as he created all the other sides of love, and it's important within a marriage relationship. But the Bible also warns against Eros outside of the husband and wife marital relationship. Then you got phileo love, which is brotherly love. And this type of love is most often shown within close friendships. This is a generous and affectionate love that seeks to make the other person happy with no expectation of the acts of kindness to be returned. David and Jonathan are one of the Bible's best examples of phileo love with a friendship, within a friendship. Their friendship and says in part that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. So phileo love is shown toward people we feel warm and affectionate to. And this means that we do not show our enemies phileo love because we do not feel warm and affectionate toward them. However, God does call us to show agape love toward those individuals we dis dislike and clash. And as we grow closer to God and experience more of his compassion, we may even experience phileo love toward people we are beginning to understand better. Now this next one is the one that we're supposed to be hanging out in. And this one's called agape love. And it's a little bit different because it's not a feeling. Hello? How many times have your feelings gotten your way? Well, I feel that that person don't like me. Well, I feel that person's talking about me. Hello? And you get your feeling hurt. Remember I said feeling. Just the one because it's your anger feeling. 
because you think somebody's talking about you or somebody said something to you. So it's not a feeling, it's a motivation for action that we are free to choose or reject. Agape is a sacrificial love that voluntarily suffers inconvenience, discomfort, and even death for the benefit of another without expecting anything in return. We are called to agape love through Christ's example. It says in Ephesians 5, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we're supposed to agape God in Matthew 22. We're supposed to agape our neighbor, Matthew 22. And we're even supposed to agape our... Ooh, you're getting this. We're even supposed to agape our enemies in Matthew 5. The New Testament has over 200 references to agape love. So everybody knows 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. But there's no book that speaks more about agape than 1 John. Two important themes come out of 1 John. The first is that it is an inconsistent and false to claim that we agape love God while we were not agape loving other believers. We cannot love God without loving brothers and sisters who also love him. The second is that it is inconsistent and false to claim we agape love God if we don't obey him. It is impossible to love God while ignoring what he says. The two are totally connected. And Galatians 5.14 says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, throughout the Bible, 200 and something things talking about love, in the New, just in the New Testament, but there's a place where God commands us to love. And so a command is not a, maybe you can or maybe you can't. Well, you can or can't, that's totally up to you, it's your choice. But when God commands us, we're supposed to do what? Obey, Obey that. So turn to your Bibles to John 13. You've heard this scripture probably a hundred times already. John 13, starting in verse 34, Jesus is speaking, and he says, I am giving you a new commandment. That you love one another, just as I have loved you, so you too are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. So we're supposed to do what? Love Only on Wednesdays. Maybe Saturday night when we're all kind of hanging together. No, we're supposed to love one another all the time. Do you know how difficult that is with us? Yes. We're a peculiar people. Especially us set freeites. And we are tough to love sometimes. Man, I didn't even get an amen out of that one. That was pretty good. Oh, you were coughing. <laughs> <laughs> but we're tough to love sometimes but God not only says that you're kind of supposed to love on them but we're commanded to love one another and if you flip over to John 15 Verse 12 says, this is my commandment, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. If you drop down to 17, it says, this is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. Seems like Jesus wants us to do what? Love each other. Love, each other. love one another. The first thing, if we'll do it, though, is command is what we're supposed to do is what? Is to love God with all our... So turn over to Luke chapter 10.
Luke 10, 27, and he says this, you shall love the Lord your God, and this is, Jesus said to him, back up in 26, Jesus asked this guy, because he has come to t mess with him, what is written in the law, and how do you read it? And the guy says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this habitually, and you will live. Whoo! Now he's getting that. Go back all the way in the Old Testament to Deuteronomy chapter 5, or Deuteronomy chapter 6, excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Starting in verse 4 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one, the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength and your entire being. Now, if he's saying it in the Old Testament, bringing it into the New Testament, and he says, this is a new command I'm supposed to give you, what do you think we're supposed to do? We're supposed to obey it. How many of you love to just you're just the most obedient people on the earth. You're told what to do. You're told what to do. The boss tells you what to do, and you're, oh, I'll get right on that. Or the boss tells you something that you don't want to do, but it doesn't go against biblical principles. Do you go, I'll get right on that? Careful. You might have to repent what you're thinking here. So this Deuteronomy, let's just read starting in verse 1, Deuteronomy 6, 1. It says, now this is the command, the statutes and the judgments, precepts which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you so that you might do, follow, obey them in the land which you are crossing over, the Jordan to possess. So that you and your son and your grandson may fear and worship the Lord your God with awe-filled reverence and profound respect, to keep and actively do all his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you all the days of your life, so that your days may be prolonged. Who is he telling they're supposed to be doing this to? To our kids. You know, I love Marshall and Gina and what they're doing with our kids upstairs, but you know who's... It's not their responsibility to be giving them the foundation of Jesus Christ. It's the parents' responsibility to be given that foundation of Jesus Christ. They should just be adding to it and highlighting it up there. Verse 3 says, Therefore listen, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in numbers, as the Lord God your fathers has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is the one, the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, your entire being. These words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. You shall teach them diligently to your children, impressing God's precepts on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truths, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk on the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, forearm, and they shall be used as bands, frontals, frontlets on your forehead. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So I don't know if any of you have ever noticed the Orthodox Jews. The Orthodox Jews wrap stuff on their forearms. They also have a box on their forehead that's tied on. And these are all these scriptures that they have on here. On the doorposts, what did I do with it? If you go to Israel or wherever you're at in the United States too or wherever and a Jew lives in that house 
that's following the Jewish faith as best they can, most every one of the, every doorpost has one of these over when you're entering the house. And this scripture that we just read is in these. The here, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being. And in fact, the true Jews that are following their faith as best they can recite that twice a day. So every time they walk into the house, they touch this going into the house or going into a door. Some of the motels that we stay in there, there's well, only one that I know of that's a, run by Jewish people. Over every door going into your motel room is one of these on the doorpost. What is that? It's a reminder. Why do they wrap that around their arms? Reminders. Why is that on their head? It's a reminder. Yeah, they get crazy with some of that stuff. And I mean, they even do it on the airplane. There's times when they're going to pray and you can watch the boys. They got a little, they pack a little, like a little suitcase that has their prayer shawl in it. They wrap their stuff. They put their head thing on. They got their book and they'll go into the little galley area and there they go. And they'll pray their thing when they're all done and then they got a ritual where they undo everything and put everything back in their little suitcase. Now I'm not saying that's what we're supposed to do because that's just a ritualistic practice. But they're faithful to that. And they're saying... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, twice a day. How many times do we think about loving on people? Now, it's easy to love your spouse. Well, sometimes it's easy to love your spouse. <laughs> We're just going to be honest. Come on. How many of you married in here? Okay. How many of you, it's just beautiful, perfect every day? Don't raise your hand, because I'll call, Leo, I know better, come on. <laughs> Judy, just give him a whack, there you go. <laughs> it can be tough some days. But the first and foremost thing, if we'll love God with all, it'll make it a whole lot easier to love your spouse, to love your kids, and especially your neighbor. your neighbor who could be your enemy. You know what I mean? It's funny, you go over to the wall, the western, some people call it the Wayland Wall, they like to call it the Western Wall. You got all the boys on one side. They got a wall separating it. All the girls are on the other side. They say, why do they do that? Yeah, we won't go into that. But there's a bunch of them there. And what are they doing at the wall? They're not sitting there chit-chatting about what's for breakfast or lunch or dinner. They're in their books. And they're praying. And it ain't about, well, mama didn't listen to me this morning. I can pick on her. She's not feeling good, so I'm good. I'll be all right when I get home. <laughs> But their prayer is coming from their heart and they're praying for Jerusalem. They're praying to get the temple back. Their main prayer is that they're going to build that temple again. And they're dedicated about praying. Go ahead and sit down a minute and I'll get you here in a little bit, okay? So let's go back to Luke 10.
And I'm going to start from 25. We've already read part of this, and so I'm going to read a little bit more. Luke 10, 25, and it says, A certain lawyer, an expert in Mosaic law, stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this habitually, and you will live. But he, wishing to justify and vindicate himself, asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he encountered robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings and beat him and went their way unconcerned, leaving him half dead. Now by coincidence, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also came down to the place and saw him and passed by on the other side of the road. But a Samaritan, a foreigner, and they all hated, the Jews hated the Samaritans, was traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion for him. And he went to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them to soothe and disinfect the injuries. And he put him on his own pack animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii, two days' wages, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I return. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who, enco who encountered the robbers? And he answered, The one who showed compassion and mercy to him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and constantly do the same. So what are we supposed to do? Show love, mercy, and compassion to people. How tough is that? I was telling the boys this week or last week, I said, I used to have this thought in my head that when somebody would really make me mad, I'd think about, my prayer would be, Father God, just let me throat punch them. We'll pray for him to be healed, and then you'll get all the glory for it. <laughs> what kind of stinking thinking is that? <laughs> but you know what? You're all laughing because you would think the same thing. But that's not how Jesus thinks. Jesus wants to give them love, mercy, and compassion. Uh-oh. All right, we're going to finish this out. Turn to 1 Peter 4.8. 1 Peter 4.8. Two scriptures and we're done. First Peter 4.8 says this. Above all, have fervent and unfailing love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. It overlooks unkindness and unselfishly seeks the best for others. Love covers a multitude of what? Sins. Turn to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 11. It says, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, and his words of wisdom are a source of blessing. But the mouth of the wicked conceals violence and evil. Verse 12, Hatred stirs up strife, but, here's one of the big buts, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions forgiving and overlooking another's fault. On the lips of the discerning, skillful and godly wisdom is found, but discipline and the rod are for the back of the one who's without common sense and understanding. So verse 12 again says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions, forgiving and overlooking another's fault. I'm just going to ask you just to bow your heads tonight.
And I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit why you got your heads bowed. The Holy Spirit just to bring to mind someone you're just having a rough go with. You might say, well, I don't hate them, but I sure don't like them. Well, that's basically about the same thing. And I'm just going to pray that God will give us the heart of compassion, the heart of mercy, the heart of overlooking and covering a multitude of sins. And give us some wisdom and some guidance in what we're supposed to do. So Father, tonight I just pray for each and every one of us here, Father, that our hearts would be tender and open to what you'd have us to do. Father, that we could actually look with those Jesus glasses at the person that we're having a rough go with. And that we could see with eyes of compassion, eyes of grace, eyes of mercy, eyes of love, and just start praying for those people. Father, I thank you that we have the tests and the trials and the, and the EGR people, the extra grace required people in our lives that show us that we need you because there's no way we can do this on our own. So Father, I thank you for this group. I thank you that we're in the fight and that we're leaning on you for everything that we need. We, ha we have to lean on you because we can't do it by ourselves. So Father, help us. Help us to love unconditionally all people. And we give you all the praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, can I warn you before you leave? We just prayed this prayer. I'll almost bet before tomorrow is over, somebody's going to piss you off. <laughs> And why do I say that? Because you just prayed, you just prayed, and guess who heard you? The enemy just heard what you prayed. So he's going to say, oh, okay, let's watch this. So just beware, because if you're aware of what's coming at you, you'll be able to pass the test. Amen? So go love on somebody tomorrow when they make you mad. Amen? Love you.